In terms of developing distinct styles and trends, the big players in the comic book medium are the United States, Japan, and Europe. One reason for this is that the development of the form took place in each region more or less independently of the others. A wholly unique style of storytelling within the comics framework developed in Japan due to its self-imposed period of isolation from the Western world. Also, France and England outlawed American comics for a period of time, which had the effect of allowing unique voices to be developed with less outside persuasion. Especially important is the fact that the commonly held bias against comic books that is prevalent in America is virtually non-existent in most of Europe and Japan. With the amount of influence that European and Japanese comics have had on the American comics industry, it's a shame that comics from other countries don't have more of a presence in the U.S. Comics have spread all over the world, and while most countries are strongly influenced by comics from either America, Japan, Europe, or some combination of the three, each culture has added its own uniqueness to the form. It's not at all unheard of for other entertainment media to be enriched by the contributions from around the world. Foreign films often gain acclaim in the U.S., and foreign books are translated into English all the time. It should be no different with comic books. The wealth of creative diversity available in comics from other nations and cultures is amazing, but very little of it reaches American readers, despite the fact that comics are frequently translated into many languages and distributed among many separate countries outside of the U.S. Maybe the reason for limited foreign influence in the States lies in the political and societal strife experienced by many countries, combined with the lack of freedom of expression. In this, this sort of climate, there is little leeway for developing the sort of entertainment that would appeal to a wide American audience. Instead, when comic books are produced in many societies, they are used mainly as educational tools or for specific propaganda purposes, thus limiting their relevance to American readers outside of purely academic interests. Most, if not all, African countries have a fairly long history of producing comics in French and English, as well as in the many native tongues of the continent. Unfortunately, their influence on American comics is almost non-existent, particularly in the mainstream. In addition to the reasons mentioned before, there are other causes for this. For one, distribution is so poor in many areas of Africa that it's hard to get many comics in the country they are printed in, never mind in outside countries or all the way over in the U.S. The difficulty and cost of translating comics from various African dialects to English would also be considerable. Australia and New Zealand are, have thriving comic book communities that are comparable to the independent and small press comic scene in the U.S., and many of these comics would be fitting additions to the American market. Similarly, comics are very popular in Middle Eastern countries, but since they are usually either politically or religiously motivated or used to teach children to read Arabic, they wouldn't really gain a foothold in the States. A wonderful exception to this is Persepolis, which has recently been released in English and has earned much critical praise. Latin American countries have also produced many gifted creators, most of whom were inspired by comic books from the U.S. Often, these artists have been separated into two schools of thought, those devoted to the realistic action hero style of Hal Foster and Alex Raymond, and those adopting a more cartoony, clean style reminiscent of Milton Kniff. There are a number of artists from South and Central America whose work precipitated various design trends in North American comics and North American comics art. Latin American societies are generally a bit more accepting of adult content in comics more than the U.S. And Dark Horse's recent venture line of graphic novels has brought some of the resulting works into the U.S. The Philippines have given comics an astounding number of very talented artists, yet it's difficult to pin down a single Filipino style because Filipino creators have historically been influenced by works of Europe and Japan, as well as American comics left behind by U.S. soldiers. 
Thus, their work shows a unique mix of the three major styles of comic art, blended together and built upon to create an impressive array of individual styles. The notion of comics as strictly creative outlet is certainly not unheard of in other countries. However, while foreign comic books may be more difficult to grasp by American readers, even once the language barriers have been overcome, the artistry inherent in these works should speak for itself and would certainly be of benefit to the American comic book field. Several of these works are beginning to trickle into the U.S. and gain notice. The comic book form may have been born in the U.S., but the tradition of sequential art has a much longer history, spanning many cultures and evolving along several divergent paths. The synthesis of language and pictures is a natural step in the progression of communication and expression. No matter what country you're from, it's only fitting that influence from all over the world should play a role in the evolution of American comic books. As comic books grow more diverse, it will be interesting to see how these various styles of expression will be incorporated into the greater whole.